Paola Vigano. I'm a, an architect and an urbanist and uh, I'm a professor in uh, urbanism and urban design and I teach in Venice, in the EPFL, Lausanne, in different schools. We are in a special place. This is a cemetery. We are in uh, Cortrec in Flanders, close to the French border, close to the city of uh, Lille. And uh, this is um, an urban site. Maybe the first impression when you see uh, all this uh, beautiful uh, countryside, uh, the waves, the hills, uh, some green fields, one can imagine to be in, the, in a rural setting. But in fact, we are in the city. The contemporary city is uh, made of places like this. We have a university just on, on this side. We have a, a sport complex just behind me and a cemetery that is an important also uh, urban infrastructure that is here. So this place for me is a, is a way to describe also the change in the form, in the type of space uh, that we call a city. Uh, many years ago, um, together with Bernardo Secchi, we started to work in Flanders, in, in Cortrec, on another site. And then, at a certain moment, we had the opportunity to study, to design uh, the new cemetery of the city. And uh, the idea from the city side was uh, to fill a little bit this, uh, this area with a traditional uh, cemetery. <laughs> So we, we propose to, um, to use the project, to use this transformation, to organize a description of this territory. Um, I remember Bernardo Secchi explaining to the citizen of Cortrec that uh, Flanders was not a flat, uh, flat land, <laughs> that Flanders was uh, made of uh, waves, and that uh, the beauty of this landscape was exactly uh, related to this movement and uh, to the horizon that is uh, always changing depending on your position. If you are lower, in the lowest part, as if we were right there, that we don't even see it, or if you are on the crest, as we are now in this, uh, in this moment. So the idea of uh, proposing a, a project as a way to reveal uh, a territory and, and a landscape. Well, this place uh, changed me, uh, I think, quite a lot. Of course, uh, to uh, reflect on a place uh, for, uh, for death is already something changing you. But uh, the interpretation is, uh, we try to give is that uh, there is really no distance uh, between uh, the, the two sides. And uh, at the entrance of the, of the cemetery that we conceived as a true public space, open, uh, available also to other practices, not only the one of uh, meditation, we can say, and, uh, and mourning. Uh, at the entrance of, of the cemetery, there is a sculpture that is a table, a table with some uh, dishes. And the idea is that uh, a table is a place of meeting for, uh, for us that are still alive and for those that are not anymore there. So it's, it's really a, the idea of a, a place of um, sh where you can share with uh, the rest uh, something that is um, still uh, your life. And, uh, and I think that this was uh, very much understood by, by the people in this moment because it's, uh, just, uh, there has been just a storm. But normally a lot of people is uh, in the cemetery and use the cemetery as a, as a public space. So people that come here 
during the day just to eat a sandwich. Uh, young couples come here to make love. Uh, it's, it's not only a place for, uh, for death. And, uh, and I think this is um, something we really want to, to achieve. But uh, the main, the most important part of this story is uh, the idea of uh, using a, a project to describe a, a site. And uh, we can say that uh, we describe uh, a slope, the form of the slope, and in three ways. So there is, first of all, there, there is a path, and the path is constructed on uh, the existing slope. So we didn't modify it, we just followed the existing movement. Then uh, there are the terraces, I think there are 12 terraces, with a regular uh, difference in level. So you can measure the, 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 the difference you have from the, this high part and the, and the low part, just with this regular descending of the, of the terraces. And then there was another one here that is uh, uh, close to an incision. There is an incision, what uh, the, the um, British architecture <laughs> would define a haha, -ha, so this uh, separation that is just an incision in the, in the ground. And, uh, and then there was a possibility to, to walk also uh, on, uh, on this uh, sort of dune that is uh, dividing the um, cultivated land, because this is sometimes still cultivated, and uh, the uh, um, cemetery without fences, without using uh, other materials uh, to, to divide it. So, and this uh, element, this uh, dune, is always changing its relation with uh, the regular part of the, of the terraces. And also the terraces are always in a different relation with, the, we can say, the natural slope. And uh, in these different differences, you can read this richness of the topography that is uh, ever changing uh, during all the, along the path. For us, this was uh, a manifesto, a manifesto of a project as a description. So it's not uh, the idea of a descriptive attitude in which you want to be mimetical, but it's on the contrary a very radical idea that uh, by describing you can make something more evident, you can reveal something, and uh, this becomes, you can say, shared by everyone because it's more clear, more evident. And um, I think that also I, what I understood uh, from, uh, from this uh, site and this project is that uh, design can be an instrument of knowledge production. The understanding of, uh, of this site through the project has been a true moment of revelation for, for me. And I think uh, after some years, I continuously reflected on, on this capacity of uh, the design of space to add a knowledge about that space. I think that, uh, in fact, the book I wrote uh, many years later uh, about uh, designers, knowledge producer, was uh, clearly related to this uh, space and to this experience because um, uh, normally, we don't valorize the capacity of design to be a descriptive tool. We think normally and very often to design as a problem-solving activity. And uh, on the contrary, there is this um, capacity that is really through the instruments of design, through the, um, the imagination of a, of a change that is, in fact, asking you to understand deeply uh, the context in which your design is, uh, is, uh, in, is, is integrated. And uh, you can develop a design explicitly as a tool of description. And this is, some, in a way, a way to um, make a richer uh, contribution to space, I think. <laughs> the, 
this is a, a, a difficult uh, question because uh, the place has changed a little bit or, or maybe a lot uh, after that, uh, that project and uh, I still have to take the measure of all the changes. It is true that there are things that are not possible anymore, for example, from the, 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 the crest road, the, the, the road on the crest, now it's more difficult to see the lower part uh, of the valley and this is of course um, a pity. Also this path that was conceived as a path in continuation from the crest uh, to, the, to the valley uh, is now interrupted. So maybe this is a, a way to speak of the fragility of, uh, of any idea because uh, this project is also an idea of space. Uh, is also, I think, uh, in, it was in that moment, some years ago, when the project was realized, an idea of public space in a condition of, in a kind of urbanity that is not the traditional urbanity of the, of the city center, where you, you are used to the, to the presence of public space. Uh, you, you have an idea that public space can be, uh, can be necessary. But here we are in a type of city in which public space is not so frequent. Yes, you have some specialized areas, for example, an area for sport. You have uh, uh, the park of the, of the university connected to the university, but uh, an open space, just a space uh, where you can spend some time, where there is not uh, the function is not the, 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 the element that is leading your, uh, your use, um, is quite rare in uh, this type of diffuse, uh, horizontal, I can say, um, settlement organization. Uh, so it was, uh, for us, it was important to maintain this uh, continuity of space. Uh, the, the idea of a public space is also because you can enter, you can access uh, you in, in a very easy way. It's very well uh, uh, accessible, for example, from the main road. With the transformation of the last years, I have to say that this is a little bit more difficult. You have the impression that something has been uh, interrupted. But uh, there is always a capacity of space to <laughs> regenerate itself, so uh, I'm not uh, too worried. I think that things will, uh, will find a way to, 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 to work. But um, I think that it's very important to continue to reflect on uh, what is a public space uh, in a condition of uh, low density, scattered, uh, sprawled. Uh, in Europe, uh, we have a situation in which uh, uh, this diffuse city is something different from uh, the American sprawl. So it's not the same type of space. And uh, we have more stratified, we have more layers on which uh, we, can, uh, we can build it. Uh, but still is a, is, a, is a challenge to understand what is the meaning of a public space uh, inside the territory that is mainly uh, inhabited by people in single family houses with, with a garden, uh, normally using a car and going maybe in other part of the city to, to spend their uh, time, their free time. So what is, what is a public space here? I think that the, the cemetery on one side is proposing an idea of public space because it's a, it's a space of everyone. Uh, it's something that belongs to, to every life. So I think that uh, this idea of public is here very clear. But still you have to make it as a public space, something in which you can stay in a comfortable way, uh, as a space that you, where you are not uh, immediately led to one only uh, way of using this space in which a plurality of, uh, of practices are still possible. So when we try to do a public space, we were counting on the fact that it, this was clearly public, yes, but still it had to be designed in a way that uh, could be used as a public space, not just as a cemetery, as a functional element, but uh, something more, more open. And um, in this sense, I think that uh, the, the place is adapting itself to, to this. And I hope maintaining this possibility of, of being a public space and not just uh, a functional infrastructure. <laughs>
I, I think uh, maybe I'm, I will repeat uh, uh, what I was saying, but uh, the true challenge we have, I think, today is uh, really to understand that uh, the city has become a sort of city territory. So it's a, it's a city that is inside the territory, the territory is the city, and uh, this type of, uh, of space for its uh, position in this type of city is in fact an urban uh, element, an important urban element. So um, I think that we understand better what is the contemporary city here than in the city center. We would have had the possibility to start from the city center of Kortrek, from the Grotemarkt, the traditional European with a Flemish city space, but I think that we understand much better what is the contemporary city by sitting here. Because this is the contemporary city. It's a, it's a city in which uh, agriculture, um, a piece of wood, uh, the form of the territory, uh, the lower part that is the, the wetlands that are just, uh, just there, and some uh, infrastru infrastructure that are typically also urban, are all together. So this type of space, for me, is really speaking of the city. This is the city of today. second place I have chosen to speak about space and to speak about the city and uh, to speak about public space and, and the role of public space in, uh, in the contemporary city. Uh, it's the park of Spor Nord in Antwerp. It's a recent park that we have designed, Bernardo Secchi and myself and other people, some years ago and the park has opened since uh, four or five years. And uh, it's, um, it, it's a place that gave us a lot to think about uh, the role of public space in the city. This space was, um, it was an ancient uh, uh, railway platform. So it, a few years ago, it was just a ballast surface. And uh, there was the, the most important uh, train station for, for the harbor of Antwerp that was still uh, inside the city. Today, the harbor is uh, far away from the city and then uh, this surface was abandoned and then uh, there was a lot of uh, discussion on how to transform this big space inside the city of Antwerp in the very center of the city of, Ant in, of Antwerp in, uh, in something new. So my, my work and the work we did uh, was uh, starting from this ballast surface and to reflect on uh, how a new park, a new big important public space could uh, play a role in, uh, in the city. <laughs> the first time uh, I came here it was uh, in 2003 and um, it was difficult in that moment to, um, to imagine the transformation of this, uh, of this place but uh, what was important was that even if uh, it was a abandoned uh, site, a lot of people were uh, starting to use it. So there were already practices in this, in this place and um, the city of Antwerp organized a competition and this competition was uh, very interesting because there was a, a work, a preliminary work with the inhabitants of the area and uh, we observed what the inhabitants were asking for this site and uh, we were also observing the way in which they were designing sort of a hier hieroglyphic on the surface, uh, asking for a place where to move in different ways, where uh, different types of uh, uh, movements could be possible. 
And we were very much inspired by this idea of uh, flows inside the, the, this area. And uh, we followed their indication. Of course, it was uh, taking uh, an image and transforming in a space. Uh, and that, that was the starting point of, of our work. And it was uh, always very much in contact with, uh, with the different populations of the area. Although there was a problem, because uh, we are here in one of the poorest parts of the city of Antwerp. And uh, the immigrants, the immigrant population that is living, even is, they are still living today here, which is very important, uh, they were not participating to, um, to the debate, uh, to the moment of discussions. They were clearly remaining outside of it. We were just meeting people, I mean, the uh, Flemish population, they were here, and uh, with them we had a lot of discussions, while the Turkish population, the uh, Moroccan population, they, they were not really participating. And that was one of the most important, I think, challenge of this uh, project, how to, 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 to imagine a space for all type of populations. And uh, I think it, this is very important because in uh, this part of the city, the contemporary city is made of different type of spaces. And here we are in a very specific uh, type of space. We are inside uh, the compact city. Uh, inside the compact city, a lot of transformations have completely modified the, uh, the, the structure of the, of the city. Uh, industrial areas, uh, infrastructural surfaces, they are changing. A lot of uh, buildings here, they are exactly, uh, we saw them there, for example, we, we see them here. They were all, all related to uh, a different past. And uh, the problem is to uh, reintegrate them in, new, in a new cycle. You can say in a new life cycle. Um, something that is uh, asking for, for, I mean, is asking for a lot of, of imagination. And uh, the fact that the poor part of the city is here is because this was uh, an industrial part. Here were the workers of the harbor living. Uh, so it, it, it's a working neighborhood and uh, how a big public space could uh, transform this neighborhood, but uh, try to avoid the complete gentrification of the site. Try to avoid, for example, the risk of a park just for certain part of the population. And uh, how to open a new life cycle in which this place is not uh, a periphery anymore, but is one of the centrality of the city. So this type of, of uh, strong modifications, I think this is really a metamorphosis of, of, of space. It's something that uh, the, the city centers are uh, uh, every day asking for, for this kind of new, of new interpretations. So first of all, I would say that uh, the problem of a concluded life cycle Space conclude a cycle and you have to reopen it and you have to reintegrate practices and uh, your material is the space itself, is through the design of, of space that you try to reinterpret this, uh, this area. I think uh, that uh, this space uh, was uh, an important moment of reflection on uh, some concepts that uh, are probably quite interesting uh, uh, for uh, in imagining uh, a, a project for the city today. The concept of porosity was, uh, was very important here. Here we, we see exactly what the uh, geologists would call uh, uh, porosity of fracture. At a certain moment inside the city, big fractures open. Uh, they are related to technological shifts uh, or uh, changes of, in the way of living, of inhabiting. Um, the city of Antwerp uh, is, uh, is an example of, of uh, the white population flee out of the city. They abandoned more or less the city center 
during the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and they uh, prefer to live outside in the diffuse uh, horizontal metropolis uh, in which they have built their single family house with, uh, with garden. This was a, an a strong policy of the Belgian government su to support uh, the ownership of the house and also this kind of suburban type of, uh, of lifestyle. And uh, when we arrived here, uh, only immigrants were living, in fact, in this part uh, uh, of the city. So the city was extremely porous in, in, in the sense that a lot of spaces were simply abandoned, some of them as uh, the Park of Sport Nord because of this um, uh, transformation of the harbour and then uh, the abandon of the, of the platform, and in other cases because the original population was uh, not there anymore. And um, the porosity is an opportunity, of course, because uh, you have the impression that uh, space is again a malleable um, entity. It's not rigid. You can, uh, you can imagine something different using the porosity, using the fact that uh, there is a certain tolerance in space. There is more space than what is needed, uh, what is used. And uh, the porosity of, the, of fracture, the, the fracture that is uh, opening, uh, this, this porosity, but also the porosity of the materials. For example, all the buildings here are, they were used for uh, different purposes and they are now uh, used for as a cafe or uh, as a sports center, which is uh, the case uh, there. Uh, so I think that uh, the, the question of porosity became a quite uh, fundamental uh, way to look at the city look at the city, the built environment, the material environment, but also the social environment, the uh, lifestyles. How do you live in a very porous city? You live in a different way from a, a city that is completely um, filled up. No? Porosity gives you more imagination, gives you the possibility to, uh, to change your practices, to invent, to, to introduce uh, uh, modifications. So I think that this uh, uh, aspect of porosity what, was what um, was making of Antwerp a very innovative city, a, a city where people, some people coming back to live uh, in the city center could really uh, transform their life uh, space, the space in which they were living. And, uh, in this sense, I think that porosity can be a very, a very crucial and very interesting uh, quality of, uh, of space. Of course, porosity can be also very negative when, uh, when in fact, there is um, blurring very much the relations among the different parts. And um, sometimes porosity is simply hiding uh, some qualities. But we were, in a way, trying to use porosity as a positive uh, element. And, uh, constructing for the different types of porosity of, uh, of this site and also of the neighborhoods around, different types of, uh, of projects. For example, just close to here, just there, there is a small uh, space that is a, a, a slope of a tunnel covering the high-speed train that is passing there and is coming out in the middle of a square. So that type of fracture uh, ask for a very simple uh, project, but still ask for a project because this type of uh, uh, interruption, uh, the, the, the TGV uh, passing there, was asking for a redesign of a, of, of a small uh, public space. And uh, I think what we understood that porosity is uh, interscalar, is crossing scales. You have porosity of different uh, uh, grains. And, uh, and the city is very interesting when you have a different kind of porosities and you can work on it uh, at different scales. We were also in the conditions uh, working on this uh, space to think at the space of the city altogether. We were reflecting also on the structural plan of, uh, of the city of Antwerp in which these uh, different grains of porosity were uh, coming up, were showing up and uh, for us they were a way to um, interpret the city and to propose uh, different strategies for this, uh, for this porosity. 
the concept of porosity was very important also in other contexts, and that's why I think uh, the fact that we went deeper here makes uh, this space uh, very special for, for me. If, you take, uh, if we take the concept of porosity for sure, uh, when we worked on uh, Paris, on Greater Paris, it was quite uh, shocking for us. On one side, uh, a very permeable, porous city, Antwerp, and on the, other, on, on the other side, a city with a lot of rigidity, a lot of barriers, a lot of uh, uh, fractures that were not yet porous. And um, this lack of porosity in the case of Paris were in our opinion, was asking for a project of porosity. Here we were really profiting of porosity. In uh, Paris, the problem was to insert porosity, to use all possible uh, devices to uh, integrate porous spaces uh, inside, uh, inside the city. So I think that uh, for some reasons, although even in Paris we have a lot of abandoned uh, areas or um, uh, not so well used or not so much used uh, uh, surfaces, still uh, space is much more uh, organized, is much more impermeable to uh, imagination, I would say, to the, the possibility for uh, inhabitants, for people living, to appropriate of those space. And uh, this is in fact a big difference because this space was appropriated even before the project, even before the transformation, it was already used by, by people. Well, uh, I have not really changed my opinion about, about this, uh, this place. Um, on the contrary, I think that um, for me it's very important the, the role of uh, space and especially of public space uh, in the city. And um, I think that uh, this was not uh, so evident for, uh, at the beginning when we were working. Uh, when we participated to this competition, we, uh, we were convinced that a city needs public space in a certain even quantity. It's not just a problem of uh, having some public space, but to have also big public space. The size, the scale of this public space uh, is important. But this was not uh, the position of all the, for example, all the designers that were participating. Um, the idea that uh, the city of today still need big public spaces is something that is not shared by everyone. Uh, for example, there, someone might say that uh, the city would need a smaller uh, proximity space, spaces for the neighborhood, spaces for... No, no, we, we think, and I think uh, I'm very much convinced of this, that uh, the city needs different types of public spaces, and also the, the big scale of the public space is, uh, is important. It's also a place of representation of uh, the city, <laughs> of uh, citizenship, I would say. So the scale is important. And uh, for us, for, it was very also uh, coherent not to fragment this dimension. I want to speak a moment of, of the scale of this park. It's almost uh, two kilometers long. It's not very, very large because it was a railway yard, so it is mainly a linear uh, strip but it's almost two kilometers. And to have inside the city, the compact city, such uh, unity makes of this park also a recognizable figure. This park is also a figure in the city and is a figure that can also be prolonged. And uh, I hope that in the future, other projects will prolong this figure that is connecting the river with uh, the open spaces uh, outside the denser part uh, of the city. So I don't think I've changed 
my uh, position in respect to this. On the contrary, I think I have reinforced the conviction that uh, we still need public space and we still need big public spaces. The big uh, scale is also a way to um, integrate a different practices. A big public space uh, is flexible and we have tried to make it very, very flexible. I mean, it's, it's, uh, the design of this park is, is very simple. It's, I even say almost basic. Everything is, is basic here, the materials, uh, the type of uh, furniture. I mean, it's really, a, a, our idea was to have a very simple uh, space that could be used in many different ways. So we tried not to over-design space. Space is uh, light design. And uh, one consequence of this light design has been also the cost of the park. So the park uh, was in fact uh, less expensive than what we thought. And because it was less expensive, the, the municipality could immediately uh, requal qualify, requalify and reopen the big buildings. And that was very important because uh, for example, this building has a very interesting story. The initial idea was to uh, uh, demolish the, the building because there were no functional programs. The city had nothing to, to put inside. So for them, it was very clear that without a program, you don't need space. So that was for me a very important lesson. Uh, we need space even when we have no programs. So I'm completely on the opposite uh, idea of other that think that um, first of all you need a program and starting from the program you will, ha you will have a space. I think that uh, we need spaces and then we will find programs. And uh, this means that uh, the interesting uh, reflection that was connected to maintaining this building was that uh, a city needs um, redundancy. You need a certain, as, as I said, porosity is also redundancy. You need a tolerance, you know, in, in, a, in a special, uh, uh, from a special point of view, which is also a tolerance from other point of view, but uh, uh, immediately this place, because there were no programs, new programs arrived, and uh, no one had the, the idea that, uh, for example, so many people could uh, use this as a, a true centrality, a true urban centrality, even metropolitan centrality. And then uh, practically it was much more than what we, we thought and what uh, everybody was expecting from, uh, from this, uh, this place. And this uh, maybe leads me to another important uh, part of the, of the reflection on space. Uh, that is, um, we are too much used to the idea of associating uh, a certain, certain types of space to certain types of cities or certain type of uh, neighborhoods. We are too much used to uh, the idea that because when we have a neighborhood, we need a, pro a proximity space, a space at the scale of the neighborhood that is in fact uh, giving an answer to the basic uh, needs of public space, of services, etc. Well, I'm completely against this idea. I think that uh, in the contemporary city, this uh, kind of uh, cell concept is completely dead and is even not, uh, I mean, it's really not open, it's a closed uh, idea. We, we need in such space, for example, that is in the poorest part of the city, we need a, true, a truly metropolitan space, a space that is able to attract people from outside the neighborhood and because of this is, is a constructing condition of exchange that are otherwise very, very, very difficult. If we continue with the idea that um, uh, each community has its own space, we will have gated spaces, no? uh, spaces that are limited and the limited exchange. And if we continue to support the idea that neighbors need just their own basic space, again, I think we are supporting the idea of uh, separated spaces. On the contrary, and we call this uh, the relation villages and metropolis, 
many big cities are made of villages, not only London that was uh, described by Rasmussen as being unique, a unique city because this big metropolis was made of villages, but every city is made of villages and every metropolis is made of villages. But also every village is belonging to the metropolis. And uh, sometimes uh, big uh, public spaces or big service, big, big infrastructures, they are close to the villages or they are uh, touching the villages or they are even inside the villages. So the small villages inside this area, I mean, each own neighborhood with its own population, they participate also of the metropolitan space. And this, this park is used by people coming, for example, the weekend from outside the city of Antwerp, just because they, they like the, the space. Or um, people coming here for big uh, parties or for weddings or for uh, uh, yeah, moment, important moments of their life. And also the everyday life, uh, people really living just around it that are coming inside. And uh, so refusing the idea of uh, a park for the neighborhood, but uh, supporting the idea that this had to be both the park for the neighborhood, but also a park for the metropolitan uh, uh, area. I, I think we understood something important and reflecting then on the city of, of Antwerp, we tried to, to maintain this, uh, this idea that um, uh, scales are much more integrated than what, what we think uh, because the way which we use, which, in which we practice space, is completely transversal, crossing uh, all different types of uh, limits and also of, uh, of scales. In terms of designing this village metropolis space, I think that you have to consider some elements. And um, for example, the, the role, the way in which you de we designed the, the border of the park, it was like a, a long threshold. Now, in each point you had to, for example, this is uh, an enlargement of the park at the level of the houses. The houses are higher because there is a, a viaduct there, so the houses follow the, the slope, and so we decided to bring a part of the park at the same level of the houses, in a way that they can really get out and immediately are inside the park. Or there, for example, we put a series of small entrances to the park that are already places where you can sit, where you can meet, where you have the small playground for the, for the children, so even the, the Im immediate uh, uh, the entrance of the park is already a place where you can stay, where you can immediately feel as being inside the park, but also very close to your house. Is really uh, the, the, the threshold between the house and the, and the rest of the, of the park. So by designing really the border of the park, this uh, long uh, linear uh, space, we tried to give immediately the, a relation with the houses around, but also an invitation to come into the park. Knowing that, for example, elderly people, maybe they don't like to come until uh, this point, but they just stay on the benches, the long benches that are close to their house. So using really the different scales to, uh, to connect the uh, metropolitan space with the the local, the very local space just uh, in face of your, of your house. Space matters for many reasons, I would say. Um, first of all, space for me is... Um, I follow uh, Deserto about space. Uh, space is, an, is a place but it's a place with practices inside. Space is, is both, it's, it's a physical, I mean, you can measure it, you can take a, uh, yeah, you can measure a, in a precise way, physically, eh, the space, but at the same time, there is something you cannot measure, and this is uh, the practice, this is the, the way in which different uh, people appropriate of this, of this space. So, in, the, in this sense, of course, space matters because it is the place and the practice of the place. So it's uh, something that is uh, at the core of uh, 
all our interest for, for space and, uh, and for, for the city. Secondly, I think that the space matters because um, through space we can uh, understand how the city is produced. So the production of space is also fundamental. No? So to reflect on the way in which, for example, such a big public space has been uh, finally produced. It has been uh, really an intention, a very strong motivation from the side of, uh, of the city of Antwerp to uh, requalify this very degraded part of the city, starting with this big park. It, it could have been a failure. Imagine processes of degradation. It could have been very easily a completely uh, lost opportunity. And I think that there was a lot of fear at the beginning that uh, maybe uh, the, po the population around the, the park would have not liked to come into the park or on the opposite, that this park could become just a neighborhood park and not the metropolitan park that also was one of the uh, ambition of the, of the city. So I think that space matters because we read through space everything about uh, society, about uh, I mean the engagement also of the city in uh, retransforming re uh, itself. And uh, I think uh, that space also matters because it's a truly political uh, act. So <laughs> we are here because we are citizens, we are here because uh, it's a public space, uh, so I think it's a, it's a true political act, this, this part. <laughs>